Hello and welcome to Learn Chinese Now, brought to you by italki.com. Today's word is tian yu bing, or fortune cookie. This is a traditional Chinese snack with a tragic history. Here's Chris Chappell from China Uncensored to explain. If you've been to any Chinese restaurant in the United States, you've been served a fortune cookie. A lovely little saying, some lucky numbers, maybe it teaches you a word in Mandarin. Yes, fortune cookies are a beloved Chinese restaurant tradition all around the world. But why can't you find fortune cookies in China? In fact, the ancient art of fortune cookies was nearly lost forever. It was a dark time in China's history, one that few people even know about. The origins of the fortune cookie stretch back to the roots of recorded Chinese history, the Shang Dynasty. In a grand ceremony to determine the fortune of the nation for the coming year, the emperor would toss oracle bones into bronze ding vessels that would then be lit. A mystic would interpret the cracks that formed on the bones as predictions for the future. Clearly a feudalistic superstition. That's why during the Cultural Revolution, when Mao Zedong began destroying the Four Olds, a systematic campaign to wipe out traditional culture, he targeted the fortune cookie. That was the official reason Mao gave for the smash Confucius smash the cookie campaign, but actually there were much more sinister reasons behind it. For Mao Zedong, fortune cookies were more than just feudal superstition. They were also political. During the late Ming Dynasty, the making of fortune cookies became part of esoteric rituals dominated by secretive clans with occult practices rooted in geomancy, feng shui, and fortune telling based on the Bagua and I Ching. One of these clans had a charismatic leader who convinced his followers that he had divined the will of heaven, and the will of heaven was for him to become emperor. That led to the Lu Zao Hua, or Happy Good Luck Uprising of 1629, and later the 1633 Chang Fu, or Everlasting Fortune Rebellion, which they most definitely were not. Both rebellions failed, but they greatly weakened the Ming Dynasty, and they were partly responsible for the dynasty's collapse and conquest by the Manchus in 1644. So it's no wonder that in the 20th century, Mao Zedong was afraid the fortune cookie could threaten his rule. At least, that's the accepted scholarly interpretation. But it turns out, there might be more to the story. Uh, no, no, that's totally wrong. That's not why Mao turned against fortune cookies at all. I went to Manhattan's Chinatown to interview Jin Fong. He's a seventh generation fortune cookie master from the Southern Hargao School. His was one of only a handful of fortune cookie families that left China before the Cultural Revolution and have carried on the tradition overseas. Mao was a secret believer in the power of fortune cookies. That's why during the Chinese Civil War, when the communists were fighting the nationalists, Mao had his troops use fortune cookies to deliver secret messages between revolutionary cells. He believed it was the fortune cookies that helped him win the war. But according to these memoirs written by Mao's doctor, Mao later became obsessed with fortune cookies, especially after several predictions proved eerily correct. You mean the fortunes were accurate? Yes. One fortune Mao got read, when metal is depleted, the earth will become weak. That's based on the five elements theory. Earth generates metal. The five elements theory is a profound skill that Chinese people use to predict the future. From this perspective, Mao was using a skill that he didn't completely grasp. According to Jing, Mao thought this prediction meant that unless he increased steel production, the earth, or China, would be weak and vulnerable to foreign invasion. So, during the Great Leap Forward, he drove the entire population into steel production. That was one of the contributing factors to the Great Famine. When metal is depleted, the earth will become weak. 30 million people starve to death. The earth element correlates to the stomach. Whoa. There were other fortunes, too. The entire reason Mao blocked Zhou Enlai from getting treatment for his cancer is because of a fortune cookie predicting that if Mao died first, Zhou would take over his legacy. And that would be Zhou's face up on Tiananmen today. Wow! I am really impressed with the history of your art. So, I was wondering, can I have one of your fortune cookies? Knowing the future can be a burden as much as it is a gift. Hmm. I'll take my chances. Yes. Enjoy. You will have
have the number one show on YouTube. Oh, wow. Oh, wait, there's more. Visit Learn Chinese Now for the true meaning. Well, if you guys believed all that, I think you should learn this word. Yu ren jie. That's how you say April Fool's Day in Chinese. So, when an elementary school student tells his teacher that the principal wants to see him in his office, and he actually goes there to find out that it was all fake, Yu ren jie. That was me that pulled that one, by the way. When the BBC tells you that spaghetti grows on trees, the last two weeks of March are an anxious time for the spaghetti farmer. After picking, the spaghetti is laid out to dry in the warm alpine sun. Yep, it's Yu ren jie. Or when you see a video that says traditional Chinese fortune cookies were suppressed by the communists but preserved in America, it must be Yu ren jie. Sorry to break the illusion, you guys really believe that, didn't you? But Chris, the communists did suppress a lot of stuff. I mean, American Chinese food uses a lot of broccoli. That's surely one of the cuisines that was suppressed during the Cultural Revolution, right? I wish the communists had suppressed broccoli. It's the bane of a good General Tso's chicken. Well, if you liked what you saw and would like to check out Chris's humorous commentaries on real Chinese issues, subscribe to his channel, China Uncensored. Click the link here or in the description. Lastly, if you're interested in seriously learning Chinese, not fake stories about fortune cookies, check out our partner italki.com. They can link you up with native speaking Chinese teachers over the internet from the convenience of your own home. And we even have a buy one get one free deal for new users of the site. Check them out guys. We'll see you next week. Presidential hopeful Donald Trump has a special relationship with China. I love the Chinese people. And they love him back. People from China, they love me. What do the Chinese most want? One of the 10 things, anything Trump. Sort of like how when I was in middle school, I loved Connie Cody and she loved me back. I mean, she called me Chad once, which is pretty close to Chris. This is what happened last fall when a CBS reporter in Beijing asked for people's opinions on Trump. Jeb Bush? No, this is not Jeb Bush. 